Well, the dust has been wiped off. We've adorned war paint and this painful, excruciating wait is over because the second installment of the Grand Indian T20 League is here and so are we. We're back with T20 Crazy right here on Sports Hunter, powered part by Sportsbet.io. And who else is back? Mr. Bretley, known world over as uh, the superstar Benga Bretley, joins us from the safe confines of his million dollar palatial bungalow, his mansion in the Emerald City, the Harbour City, Sydney. Bretley, how have you been? How painful has this wait been for you? So, so good to see you back. Namaste from my humble abode. Thank you very much. Look, it's been been a tough time over here in Australia not as tough as what you guys have been through in India but uh, the great news is cricket's about to start again I'm pumped that the IPL is on just as well that we call T20 crazy because all those T20 fans are going to have a party over the next uh, two months or so the Indian T20 league followed by uh, the World Cup in the UAE can't get any better for a T20 fan isn't it yeah, look, it's really exciting, isn't it? Some really, really good cricket. The shorter form of the game, we see the superstars on show again. The big names, the big dogs, they'll, you know, they'll come out to feed and uh, looking forward to a great tournament. But children, remember, before you go ahead, it's time to look back. It's time for a revision of where things stand at the end of the first installment of the IPL, which happened a million years ago. And we've had to wait so long. But a quick look at uh, the points table and which teams are sitting pretty. The Delhi uh, side is right on top. Hyderabad, Kolkata struggling. Hyderabad have just won one game. Chennai is right up there as well in the top two. Bangalore look like uh, they could finish uh, in, in that uh, top four position as well. Uh, Binga, how do you make of this? And is there a team in the bottom half uh, that can spring the surprise and make it to the top four? Yeah, look, I think that uh, a lot of teams are a chance of being in that top four. But for me, one, it's... Um... It's, it's hard to go past, uh, you know, Mumbai. I know that Mumbai's in the top four currently. Um, they, they like to sort of sit just on the outskirts and then pounce. So yeah, I think Mumbai would definitely be in the top four, if not the top two. I wouldn't mind seeing KKR get up there, though. I think KKR have got a good squad. But then you say Kings 11, you say even the Sunrisers that are on two points at the bottom are also a chance. So we'll wait and see. Yeah, it's called Qatar have won just two games off their seven. They've lost five, so they've got to get going pretty quickly. And you know what? Uh, it's it's often very tricky to ask uh, an Aussie superstar about what the English are doing, especially if they're doing something controversial. Uh, this one's a bit contentious. Uh, Binga, four big English players have pulled out of the league for their own reasons. Uh, there's Josh Butler, Johnny Bairstow, David Milan, Chris Hope. They pulled out of the tournament. Among the other players, there's Adam Zampa, Pat Cummins, Kane Richardson as well. Now, and there are a few others as well. Now, you've mm -hmm. been on both sides of the fence. You've, you've played in this league and you've also understood how franchises work. Give us both perspectives. Why would a player do this and what are the reasons behind this big call? And how much does this upset for the various franchises and their plans going in for the second installment? Look, look it's, a, it's a great question. It's a tough question because to, to look at both sides of the coin, firstly, start with the positives. You know, I think every single player would love to be they're playing in the T20 League. They, they want to be there on the big stage, playing in front of, uh, you know, millions and millions and millions of people watching at home on their televisions and even around the world. You know, even a billion people could be watching this. So the chance of them to further themselves as a cricketer, as a well-known household name is, is definitely there. If you look at the other side of the coin, you've got to weigh up and put things into perspective in terms of the time they've been away from their family. You call this um, bubble fatigue. Now, that, that word's been sort of used recently a fair bit uh, with players around uh, different tournaments. They, they come out of, um, you know, a tournament, go into another bubble. They have to do their isolation when they come back to Australia or when they go back to the UK or South Africa, wherever it may be. So I think that the bubble fatigue, being away from their family again, um, you know, a few weeks before the tournament starts and then a couple of weeks after the tournament finishes, gone are the days unfortunately, where you turn up, you play cricket, you go home and you see your family. So on one on one side, they, of course, they want to be playing cricket. On the other side, you've got to sort of feel for them because they're going through this fatigue. Personally, I'd want to play every single match. 
Yes, but as I say, the show must go on and it shall. A few players pulling out means opportunities for a few others. And and we've picked out some of the key players who have been brought in as replacements. Uh, Evan Lewis, who uh, was in cracking form at the CPL, uh, has replaced Josh Butler in the Rajasthan squad. But he's also injured his left shoulder in the CPL finals and we're waiting to hear an update on, on his injury as well. Uh, Lex Pinar, Wanidu, Hasaranga of Sri Lanka, who troubled India in that three-match series recently has replaced Adam Zampa in the Bangalore lineup. Uh, Kolkata have brought in Tim Saudi in place of their most expensive recruit, uh, uh, Pat Cummins. And then there is left arm spinner Tabre Shamsi, who's the world's number one men's T20 bowler at the moment, has replaced uh, Andrew Tai in the Rajasthan squad. Uh, if you look at these four names, Binga, uh, which of these uh, replacements do you think could have the biggest impact for their teams? Well, there, there are four big names there, and there are uh, probably two that you know spring to mind. Firstly, when you think about Lewis and you think about Tim Southey, I'll probably go Tim Southey only because of his experience. I know that when you talk about the other three players, they've played a fair bit of you know T20 cricket around the world, long the form of the game as well. But Tim Southey, for me, is probably the closest replacement to Pat Cummins as, as what you can get. Shapes the ball away, he's got good height, he's tall, he gets some bounce off the wicket, so I think he's a good replacement. And because he's got what it takes upstairs with that experience, I think he'll do well for KKR. Right, moving on from those who are newcomers to those who were newcomers in the first instalment and did really well. One of the names that comes to my mind is uh, that young Punjab left arm spinner Hadpreet Brar, who played against Bangalore. And in that one game, he got the big three fish out. He got Kohli. Maxwell and E.B. De Villiers. He's going to tell his children, his grandchildren and their children if he stays alive in one game to get the big three. That must have been a game changer in his life. It would have been. and He's, he's probably still celebrating right now, but it's it's got to get to the point where he goes, OK, hang on, I've got to go out there and do it again. You know, it's all well and good to, to rest in laurels and think, OK, well, I've got the three big fish out in a game, but you've got to do it day in, day out. So the guys that do become those household names, they score runs for fun. They take wickets when they're needed to, not just a one-off. I'm not saying he's a one-off. I hope he's the player that can come to, you know, the park again, turn up and then take those big wickets, which I'm sure he can. Yes, and there was another man who struggled at the start and then turned it on. I'm talking about Joss Butler, Joss the boss factor, or shall we call him jo the Joss father, not the godfather. Joss the Joss father, is Joss Butler, was in cracking form uh, against Delhi. He started slowly and then he accelerated like crazy to finish with 124 of just 64 uh, deliveries to register his maiden T20 done. We're talking about uh, Joss father, 124 of 64. Now, Brett, that knock from Butler kept Rajasthan afloat. They're number five uh, on the points table. Now, this time, Rajasthan have no Ben Stokes, no Archer, no Butler. A, how badly will they miss uh, that man? And how do they make up for that loss? Well, I've always been a, a fan of the Godfather, Joss. <laughs> I can't do it, but look, he's, he's a big loss, isn't he? He's a massive loss. Um, you know, when you lose a player of that ability, that um, calibre, that you need some other players to step up. He's almost a two-man player. You know, you go out there and dominate, uh, takes on the ball as he hits inside out, he hits with the ball um, coming into the legs as well. So he's definitely a quality player. So they have to make sure that they can find someone that can step up to the plate. I mean, without being captain obvious, he is a big loss. So the Joss, Joss father, as you call him, I like the name. Right, the, the, the one option they have among the foreign players in that squad is the 24-year-old South African-born Kiwi, uh, Glenn Phillips, who's a wicketkeeper batsman option. So maybe uh, the team will have to look at him as well. But regardless of who plays and who misses out, the league is never devoid of spice and spicy stuff. And this show isn't either. It's now time for tea or for Masala Mix on T20 Crazy. Inga, we got some big shocking news a few days ago. Virat Kohli put out that post on social media saying he's going to give up T20 international captaincy after the World Cup. Now, this piece of news came in a week after the Indian uh, squad was announced and just a month before the start of the World Cup. What do you make of it? Look, it's big news. Um, there was speculation that that may be coming, but it's always when you when you hear it from his own mouth, when you actually read the statement and you you can almost feel what he's feeling. You can understand that he's been under a lot of pressure and maybe he just wants to step away. Maybe he believes that there's someone else that could do a job as good, hopefully, if not better than he did himself. I thought he was a terrific captain. I like the way he led the team. 
I liked his um, aggression. I love that uh, that control manner as well. So he had the the best of uh, both both worlds, didn't he, in terms of the aggression, but also the calmness. It's a big call, but I'm looking forward to hopefully then that will make sure that with the pressure off him as captain, he can go out there and score even more runs, which would be fantastic and and phenomenal for his uh, his side. Right, moving on from Kohli to the Sunrisers Fury. Now, Hyderabad are bottom of the table. Just one win in the first installment. And now, during that phase, they not only stripped Warner of captaincy, but also dropped him from the playing 11 in that game against Rajasthan. It seems like a typical Aussie approach. There are no emotions at play. You look at uh, what's happening with the player, take a tough professional call. And Tom Moody had a few, uh, a few things to say about that call. What do you make of what Tom Moody said? He said, we had to make the hard call. Somebody has to miss out. And unfortunately, it's him. Uh, it's it's very typical Aussie, isn't it? No emotions in the way. Well, it's it's a massive call, a massive massive call when you drop someone like David Warner. I mean, he's always been up there with the orange cap. He's he's been the orange cap holder for numerous amounts of years in the uh, T20 league. Uh, he's always in the the top two or three run getters. So to drop him, even with his experience. Now, look, I can understand if they want to go a new captain, if they want to go with a new leader, maybe to to take the pressure, a bit like Coley, take the pressure off Warner so he can score more runs. But to drop me out of the side, I mean, I don't get it. I do not get it. Warner is world-class. I don't care what anyone says. Warner has to be in the team. Get him back in. He's been training very hard here in Australia. I can promise you that he's been training the, the house down. He will come and have a cracker. Second half is T20 tournament, I promise you that. And at this stage, Hyderabad looking down the barrel, they need Warner to come up with those big runs. So we'll see if he's able to script a sensational comeback, not just for himself, but for his side as well. The other guy that needs to fire is Anur Rasa. He's coming off uh, a not so great CPL and he'll be eager to get a, a misfiring Kolkata off the block soon. Uh, Kolkata are at number seven on the table. They won just two games so far. Russell has done well against Bangalore in the past, but the last time he played them, he scored a 20 ball 31. Uh, Russell is a big match player. He is, he's a T20 marauder. Abinka, who do you think will be the key bowler for Bangalore against him? Uh, the captain has a lot of options. There's Chahal, there's Hasaranga, Kyle Jamison, Mohamed Siraj, uh, Harshal Patel, Navdeep Saini, Shahbaz Ahmed. So, who do you think will trouble uh, Andrew Russell most? Look, I think they all can, but maybe someone with a bit of extra pace. Maybe someone like Mohamed Siraj, you know, with a bit of, uh, bit of extra whip with his action. He gets that extra bounce. So the thing with Russell, when he first comes in, he doesn't like the ball short. You know, he doesn't like that big, quick Yorker, as most batsmen don't know, uh, like. However, once he's in, he can play it. But a bit like what we saw with David Warner, when David Warner doesn't get runs, his team struggle, which means that they need someone like David Warner first to score runs, but he has to be in the team. It's the same as Andre Russell. When he's not scoring runs or taking wickets, KKR, they struggle. So Kolkata, they need someone like an Andre Russell to play that freedom. And I hope that they go out and say to him, you know what, mate? Go out there and play that style of cricket that you know. Go out there and play that that style of cricket that we've all loved to, 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 to watch and to embrace. If you go out there and get out first ball, so be it. But if he plays with that confidence and that freedom, I can guarantee that he'll have a much better half of this T20 tournament because he's playing with that freedom. So I really hope for his sake he can go out there and get some runs. And I hope for Cole Cutter's sake that they can get up the table. Now, Binga, I've got to admit, amidst all this fun, insightful cricket chat, I've got to admit, I've got to confess, I've missed you a lot. And I've missed you so much that our team had to get a few people to spy on you and find out more about your past. And I've been told by our spies back in Sydney that uh, when uh, Brett was a little boy uh, at the Balarang uh, Primary School and at the Oak Flats High School, he was always a studious, studious young boy. And he's been a scholar on all things cricket ever since. And so, on T20 Crazy, it's now time for Inga's Notebook. And that little studious boy is now a scholar, as I said, on all things cricket. And so, Benga, it's time for your predictions. But before we do that, let's take a look at the games that we're looking ahead to in the first week of the second installment of the D20 League. We're looking ahead to eight games. We start with Chennai, Mumbai and going on to Hyderabad, Punjab, which is the eighth game at the end of the first week. And uh, uh, Brett, uh, before we go to specific predictions, uh, which is the one game you're looking forward to the most? Well, probably the first one um, to, to kick off the, uh, you know, the second half of the T20 tournament. You know, it's been, as you said at the start, it's, it, it sort of feels like it happened 10 years ago. So, 
Uh, looking forward to the first game happening. Um, Chennai versus Mumbai, it's going to be a big one. But then if you look down and, you know, you look at probably Mumbai versus Kolkata will be a good one. I think that Kolkata will want to make sure that they can can get up that ladder. And I think if they do that, they want to do it against, you know, the number four spot, which is Mumbai. Delhi versus Hyderabad, of course, will be a cracker there in Dubai. Uh, Sharjah as well, the one there on the 25th of September, Hyderabad versus Punjab. But you could pick all those sides and all those uh, venues. We are in for, you know, a cracker of part two, which is going to be exciting of this T20 league. And the first game that you, you spoke about, the one that you're looking forward to the most. Now, the last time these two teams met, during the first installment, we got the best game of the season. Up yeah. until then, we saw a breathtaking innings of 70 not out, not out from uh, 72 not out from Abati Rai to score that of 27 balls, hitting seven sixes. And just when we thought Mumbai were done at 81 for three, in comes the big man, Karan Pollard, and scores an unbeaten 87 of just yeah. 34 deliveries, hitting eight sixes. Remember, it's the big rivalry and Chennai have not defended a score against Mumbai for the last eight years in the league. So when the Blues take on the Yellows, Binga, which team do you think will hit the most sixes in this match? I think I'm bleeding blue, actually. I think Mumbai. Um, I'm a fan of Chennai, everyone knows that. I'm a fan of Mumbai. But I just think that with those big hitters, with those, those powerful players, I've got to go Mumbai. Mumbai with the most sixes, biggest hits. All right, go the Blues. Now, next up, we have uh, seventh place Kolkata locking horns with the with a very rock solid Bangalore. They're in the top half. They're number three in the points table. That game will be played in Abu Dhabi. Both sides have some uh, some pretty good bowlers in the ranks. The best bowler will be from which side? I think Kolkata, and I think it's uh, Shivam Mavi. I think that with that extra bit of pace uh, playing in Abu Dhabi, it can it can get a bit of shape and a bit of bounce there early on. I know it's a flattish wicket and known. Um, on, on different times of the year. But I think this this tournament, second half, I think he might get a bit of carry first up. Right, moving on to that game uh, that will feature uh, Punjab, who will be looking to get into the top half of the table. They will take on Rajasthan, who are at number five with three wins so far. Uh, KL Rahul, of course, showed us how good a test match batsman he is uh, in, in England. Will he come up uh, with the goods against uh, the Halla Bowl team? Will KL Rahul score a 50 in this game? Yes. Yes, 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 he will. And the reason why he will is because I don't care what form of the game he's playing, whether it's the longer form test matches or he's playing the sort of 50 over match or a T20 tournament. The game of cricket is very similar in all three formats, but he's been in good form and form can translate and go across those different formats. So the answer is yes, I believe you'll get a 50, if not a big one. Right now, let's talk about a team that's uh, sitting uh, nice and happy and pretty uh, top of the table. The Delhi side who will take on Hyderabad in Dubai. Uh, they are looking to consolidate their spot uh, in the top two uh, of the points table. Uh, they will take on Hyderabad in Dubai. Please pick a winner for us, Pet. Oh, I want to get Hyderabad, actually. I think that with the hunger, I think hopefully with the injection of David Warner back in the team, um, with the new look side, they've had a chance to reflect what's happened over the past few months. Delhi, of course, they're in good form, but I'm going to go uh, orange. I'm going to go Hyderabad. And finally, let's talk about Mumbai versus Kolkata. Mumbai won the last time the, the league was played in the UAE, and they will take on a side they just love to beat. Kolkata. Now, there's going to be a galaxy of batting stars for the champions. Uh, Rohit Sharma, Quinton Dikok, Ishan Kishan, Surya Kumar Yadav, Karan Pollard, Hardik Pandya. The list is endless. Who do you think will be the top scorer for Mumbai in this game? When you think about those two teams and just those caliber of people that you mentioned, I mean, it, it, it's it's world class, isn't it? It's world class. Team A versus Team B. I've got to go Rohit Sharma. I think Rohit Sharma at the top of the innings gets to face the new ball, um, you know, against a bit of extra pace from Kolkata. I'm going to go Mumbai. I'm going to go Rohit Sharma. I, I, I think he's due for a big score first up. See, I told you, Bradley has all the answers. He doesn't take a second to think of them. He knows it all. Let's take a, a look at what his predictions have been so far. These predictions will be brought back next week. And we will we will then uh, maybe take a dig at Binga if he doesn't get uh, too many of these right. He's, he's picked his answers. We asked some specific questions and there you are. And in case you're looking to... Um, you know, place a few uh, challenges against your friends. This is what you need to take cues from. These are Bradley's predictions. Right. You know, on this show, we are fairly democratic. We It's not just about the anchor and the expert. It's all about uh, you guys as well. You guys get to ask your questions. And it's that time of the show when we announce the start of Hashtag Ask Binga.
Petli is all set to answer all your questions and Binga, we've got uh, three questions that have come in uh, from our viewers on social media. They got onto the sports at our Twitter, Facebook, Instagram handle. They went to our YouTube channels. They sent a few questions. And here's the first one coming uh, in from Michelle about captaincy. Hi, Brett. Uh, so this is Michelle and I'm from Goa. My question to you is that uh, Kohli or Rohit, who do you choose as your D20 captain? Thanks, Michelle. Good question. Uh, both fantastic captains, but I think in light of what we've seen with that uh, recent statement from the the captain, um, of course, in Virat Kohli, I'm going to have to go Rohit Sharma. I think that Rohit Sharma uh, has got the opportunity to lead from the front, and I think he'll be a great captain. The second question in Ask Benga comes in from Raj, who has a thing or two to ask you about bowling celebrations. Hi, Bradley. I'm a huge fan. Your wicket celebration is something cricket fans will remember for ages. Which bowler's wicket celebration do you like more than yours? Oh, there's been many over the years. You think about Dale Stane, you think about um, Cottrell with the thank you and, you know, the, the salute. Uh, one I like now, actually, a spinner, Rashid Khan. I like this when he goes crazy. You know, he just runs off and he just gets in his own little element. You know, we know Shaab Akhtar with the, the big aeroplane. Um, some wonderful Indian bowlers. You know, you just got Jasper Pornman would give the batsman a smile or a smirk. But I've got to go Rashid Khan. I love his celebration, the excitement. When he gets the wrong and through the gate, that's what I love. We might see a lot more of that. Uh, one more question coming up. This one uh, comes in from Roshan. Hi, Brett Lee. This is Roshan Gede from Nagpur. Do you think we'll see a first-time IPL champion this season? What do you make of Punjab Kings and RCB's chances? Yeah, once again, that's a good question. Uh, look, I think there might be an upset this year. We've been we've been saying that for a while though that there's uh, there's teams that have been on the cusp. But we've seen you know Kings Eleven that they've uh, the Punjab side have been up there. Um, they've, they've, they've finished second. They've finished on the cusp. You know, third and fourth. But maybe Punjab this year, maybe this might be their season. Maybe it might be a team for the red colour to go through. Um, you know, you think about the harder teams, though, Delhi are always up there, there and thereabouts. We think about Mumbai, but maybe Punjab, maybe they might get their chance. And, I mean, talk about celebrations. I mean, imagine how pretty Zena would go. off. She'd be going crazy up there in the grandstand if, if they win. Super. Once again, uh, straight from the heart, that's how Brett Lee talks. And in case you have any more questions, remember to uh, get in touch with us through our social media handles on Twitter, Facebook uh, and Instagram. Look up uh, the Sports Adda Instagram handle and you can send us your questions there and we'll try and get Brett Lee to answer those questions. Right. It's now time for the last lap of this episode of T20 Crazy. It's now time for the end. This is your chance to win exclusive Bradley autograph merchandise. Not just that, you also get a Pyar Bhari Pucci from Bradley if you get the answer. Yes, that's what's coming up. And guess what? We had asked a question before uh, that break happened. Uh, Bing up, up first. We've got to uh, tell our viewers the answer to the question you asked last time, uh, followed by the winner. Who is it? Well, there we have it. The question was which Indian T20 League coach was the man of the match, which I played in actually, the first ever men's T20. And it's Ricky Ponning. Sabuk Agwal, uh, he answered it correctly on YouTube. So Ricky Ponning was the correct answer. And well done to Mr. Agwal. Yes, that game was played on the 17th of February, 2005. 16 years ago at the Eden Park in Auckland. And uh, Punter, as always, the big scoring champion scored 98 of 55. Eight fours and, and five sixes uh, versus New Zealand at Auckland. And uh, Brett Lee in that game got the wicket of his very dear friend uh, from across the ocean. Scott Stein has got him on a clean bowl with a ripper. But then we've got a question for all of you in this episode as well. Bing, I believe you've uh, this time um, been kind and lenient. You've got an easy question for us. What is it? It's a pretty easy question. This one. How many wickets did I take in my last T20 match? How many wickets? Mm, it's a tough one even for me to give you guys a clue on, but uh, I'll try. Okay, this game was played at the Manuka Oval in Canberra. So go Google away, ask your friends, ask your cricket nerds and uh, your uh, T20 crazy friends. They might know the answer to, to this question in case you get it right. One of you will get uh, an exclusive uh, Bradley autographed merchandise pack and what else? Uh, Pucci, like Subodh did earlier today. But guess what? 
we are done it's been a whirlwind episode it's been so so good to see you back uh, binga and hope you're safe and hope you guys are safe as well thank you so much binga for joining us and remember uh, the league is back uh, but covid hasn't gone it's still around go get vaccinated if you haven't already uh, maintain social distancing and if you do need to go out make sure you wear a mask mask up. Oh, that's it oh, on I'm sports so double well you. done and make sure you guys are double vaccinated as well uh, go get your shots make sure you wear a mask and don't forget to join us on next week's edition of T20 crazy right here on sportsada powered by sportsbet.io bye bye